I'm Miles. I got the chance to talk to Ana Gonzalez Guerrero, the co-founder and managing director of the Youth Climate Lab and one of the Corporate Night's 2019 Top Thursday Under Thursday Sustainability Leaders about her work. Here's our conversation. I firstly just want to get a sense of from your own perspective what you believe to be um, your experience in change making and leadership that you think you're most widely recognized for. Well, I think the change making actually that I'm most widely recognized for is co founding and currently being the managing director of Youth Climate Lab. We're a youth for youth lab that uh, is dedicated to creating innovative projects for climate action. So we work with really cool young people in Canada and across the world um, to support them, empower them, but also uh, give access to policy and entrepreneurship forums. My next question is essentially if you had to really pinpoint the people that you were doing your work for or with, um, I want to get a sense of like who you consider to be the people that you keep in mind when doing this kind of work. Yeah, so we work with and for uh, young people, so under 30s. Uh, because we believe that we have the most stake uh, when it comes to climate change and have not necessarily been involved in the decision-making process or in the solutions. Um, So we're trying to change that, and we're doing so through the empowerment of young people of bottom-up, so grassroots uh, level by providing tools and resources to to young folks that are already taking action on the ground, um, but also from top-down, so at the policy level, uh, empowering the next generation of climate decision makers, while also making sure that their voices are currently represented in, in international and national forums where where they should be present because the decisions made to date will be impacting them the most. What are the like, characteristics and traits that they're going to see to be able to say, oh, those are Anna's people? Ideally, I'd say we're we're a little bit of what we like to call shift disturbers. So we we move things around. We're innovative, and we're trying to come up with ways that are accessible for young people, but that also speak to the way that current systems are in place for. So it would it would be people that are ready to shake things up, ready to have a little fun while making some really impactful changes, um, and it would be young people. So we're a youth for youth lab. Um, so you would see only young people working with Youth Climate Lab. I think something worth noting is that while we are Youth for Youth Lab, we are focusing on intergenerational collaboration. So we don't want to do this alone. We want to do this together and we want to be supporting people that are currently in, in positions of power, of access to really understand what young people are asking for and what young people want while also giving young people that access and that power. So it's really working together as partners and as allies and not just as a regular stakeholder or someone to check off a box when when doing a consultation. This is the work that we do is truly to empower young people to be able to work um, towards action and maybe doing so with with other, we call them young at heart or, or youth plus. Uh, but really building that intergenerational aspect too. If you had to really pinpoint one or two core values that you can attest to, at the very least, trying to live up to on a day-to-day basis, uh, what would you identify those values as being? I would say action-oriented. We really don't have time to not be doing things now. So really action-driven, action-oriented as an organization is something that we're really aspiring to do. And then innovative. Um, Similarly, we can't afford to do things the same way that we have been doing it so far. So what Youth Climate Lab is trying to do is is really foster that innovation both with the projects that we take on, um, but also within the way that we operate internally. Again, how would someone be able to look at you without you telling them these are your values and they would be able to understand that those are your values? Since our inception in 2017, we've been taking on a number of projects related to policy, business ideas, entrepreneurship, have worked with a number of partners around the world and have done it in ways that are different. That's really what characterizes us and uh, I think it's just trying to break that 
the current way that young people are being engaged and doing it in in, in a format that really accelerates the the youth led side of things. So ideally, someone that saw a project of ours or met someone else that works within our team would see how, based on our approach or our project or our particular event, uh, young people present are really shaking things up and that they're driving they're driving action whatever that looks like for them but they're really taking taking that beyond the status quo are you able to pinpoint exactly what motivates you to act on your action orientedness and innovation Yes, I think it is a combination of uh, previously being frustrated with the way that I was seeing things happening, and not just me, but everyone in my team, Um, but also having been in touch with a lot of these young climate leaders is truly inspiring. So to be able to provide more opportunities, more projects, more resources is something that really drives us as a team to, to be acting to empower more young people to be able to do more action. We've seen it a lot in this last year. It's a really exciting time for the youth movement. Uh, We see it in the streets. We see the energy happening. It's uh, for us right now. It's about how do we transfer that energy into some, some real uh, supporting that, that movement that's already so, so strong. Um, And then kind of complementing that through, through other actions as well. So really empowering the great work that young people are already leading on the ground um, and, and doing our best on, on our particular kind of levels, which are policy and entrepreneurship. What kind of future do you want to make in the world, let's say by this time next year at the end of 2020? And what do you see, what role do you see yourself playing in creating the future that you want to see? I think overall, we are trying to do three main things as an organization. Uh, The first one is build the capacity of young people. Secondly, it's catalyzing more funds so that there is more youth-led climate action. And then thirdly, is really fostering more uh, inclusive policy options. So for me, my role as managing director, I see myself building the structures for the organization to be able to do all of this. So both internally, but also externally, the organization requires <laughs> a lot of work to, to, to be sustained in terms of team members, finances, uh, operational requirements and support. Um, so my role for the next year will be to really strengthen that while also so um, growing and scaling in, in the way that we do work. And I think something important to note is that it's not just about scaling in numbers, but scaling an impact. So for us, it's not growing for the sake of growing, but really growing uh, consciously of the fact that there is a lot of uh, good work happening. So building partnerships, supporting existing efforts, um, knowing where we're needed and where we're not, and really being strategic about the way that we scale up. Um, to be the most impactful that we can be. What would be some of the metrics that you'd look at? What do you really look out for and what does that kind of look like? Some of the key KPIs for for the next year, I think, would be internally being financially sound in the sense that everyone that works with us, we're a team of five right now, um, it's well remunerated, uh, there is... Um, enough for professional development just a good well rounded uh, team is, is something that I would really want to focus on if we are going to grow it would be as I mentioned very strategically around specific projects we're also we we try we're trying to work with what we see the future of work being for young people and as I mentioned this is a youth for youth lab so recognizing that there's a lot of interest in doing this as part of like the gig economy some people will just contribute on specific project by project basis so really staying nimble in that way to be able to bring on the brightest young people into our team uh, we call them youth climate lab associates so that they can participate and contribute wherever they feel like they can best um, really trying to compensate everyone that works with us is something really important for us uh, not relying on volunteers for for, for our work just because in the past youth-led efforts have often 
and been relied on uh, on a volunteer basis, and that's unsustainable. And then in the tr- in the sense of growing, we we have been operating both in Canada and internationally. I think the next two years for us will look more at the international side. Um, so really establishing ourselves properly in in other areas where we are needed, where we have cool key partners ready to ready to work with us together um it will be will be something that uh we're striving towards in the next year and then in canada similarly to what we have been doing working with the existing partners in in the country um to really work towards a more transformational approach um in in the next couple of years um recognizing where other youth-led action is, is taking place and, and learning how to best support each other. I want to get a sense now of where you see yourself in five years, whether that be professionally, personally, geographically, emotionally, or perhaps all of these. In five years, I will be happily looking at someone else running Youth Climate Lab. We've always seen this as a youth for youth movement uh, and a youth for youth organization. So I will probably be involved uh, as, a, as a board of director member or, or supporting in other capacities, but really, really creating the space for other young people to come on board. I'll hopefully be working uh, still in climate. I'm thinking more so work with cities. I, I'm, I'm really passionate about working at the community level and, and working to see how cities can support in, in advancing this this movement. I will likely be in Canada, but maybe not. Um, I'm, I'm going to go do a master's somewhere, somewhere else, and then we'll see where that goes. Um, emotionally, I hope I'm a little bit less tired. I think this movement has a lot of uh, burnout, has a lot of uh, eco-anxiety and frustration that comes with working in such a difficult space. So finding ways to take care of myself, take care of others in, in this space will be important for me in the next couple of years. Um, and and really still having the energy to, to continue this important work is, is where I hope to be in the next five years. I want to get a sense of any content that you've taken in, whether it be like a book or a podcast or any sorts of media or literature that you can pinpoint as being pivotal to the way you go about your life. I'm currently listening to Outrage and Optimism, which is a podcast. Uh, The host is Christiana Figueres. Um, and I think that is really shaping the way that I look at things right now. Outrage and optimism to me is, is a lot of the way I feel recently. Um, trying to maintain that optimism as part of the work, but also being incredibly frustrated with the way that uh, things have been happening so far. Um, in terms of other books that have shaped or, or media that has shaped my, my point of view, um, Ishmael is a, a book that a mentor of mine recommended a number of years ago, which really shaped a lot of the ways that I look at the environmental movement. Poor economics was also a really interesting way of, of seeing the uh, the aspects of, of inequity when, when it comes to to the economic side of, of this movement, and not just climate, but in general. Uh, in that particular case, it's it's foreign aid. Um, and yeah, I, I'd say those, those three come to mind right now.